Hello, welcome back. This is Chapter Second, The Address, written by Marga Minko. So here we go. Do you still know me? I asked. The woman looked at me searchingly. She had opened the door a chink. I came closer and stood on the step. So, the author asked the lady if she knew her, if she remember her still. The woman looked at me searchingly, and then the woman asked. She asked uh, the question so directly, she was uh, quite straightforward in asking if she knew her. So uh, the woman looked at her searchingly, inquisitively, uh, with a lot of question in her mind as who uh, this lady might be who was asking. A question in such a way. She had opened the door a chink and or the lady had opened the door a chink means a little only. It was not that it's not the case that the door was thrown fully open to the visitor and that the visitor was welcome uh, to her uh, to her residence to her house. I came close and stood on the step and uh, the author now moved a little up and stood on the step. She took a step forward and stood on the step. No, I don't know you. I'm Mrs. S. daughter when she said, when she replied, when the lady replied that no, I have no idea as who you are or as who you may be then the author was uh, forced bound to give her introduction and she said I am Mrs. S daughter that is I am uh, the daughter of Mrs. S here uh, the full name hasn't been given hasn't been mentioned by the author she held her hand on the door as though she wanted to prevent it opening any further she held the door in such a way she held the door very firmly and it indicated that she wanted to prevent it opening any further she didn't want to she didn't want to open it any further to the guest to the visitor her face gave absolutely no sign of recognition and there was no sign of recognition on her face that is her face did not present any sign any indication that she recognized the author she could uh, say identify the author she kept staring at me in silence and the lady kept on gazing kept on looking at the author in silence she was silent and uh, was looking at the author was trying to uh, trying to search her memories so that she could know as who that lady was. Perhaps I was mistaken, I thought, and then came a thought to the author's mind that uh, she had mistaken. Perhaps, uh, probably, she had made a mistake in coming to the right address. Perhaps it isn't her, and she thought perhaps this is not the same lady. I had seen her only once fleetingly and that, sh and that was years ago. And she, oh, she had just once, just once she had seen that lady and that too fleetingly and not uh, say not nicely fleetingly uh, just she got a 
she uh, got a glance of the lady and her face that is uh, she looked at her for a while only when she met her uh, the first time first and the only time only occasion and that too was years ago and even that uh, that meeting was uh, had taken place years ago lot of years ago that is long back it was most probable that I had rang the wrong bell she thought she she rang she knocked at the wrong door and she she rang the wrong bell she sounded the wrong bell she was wearing my mother's green knitted cardigan the wooden buttons were rather pale from washing now her eyes fell her eyes met the green knitted cardigan that was used by her mother and that had been worn by the lady that was worn by the lady opposite the author uh, that was green in color the cardigan was green in color and the buttons of this cardigan uh, were uh, were uh, wooden and uh, due to frequent washing due to frequent washes uh, the pay the, the button turned pale she saw that I was looking at the cardigan and half hid herself again behind the door and when she noticed when the lady noticed that the author uh, the author had noticed her cardigan she instantly hid herself behind the door half not fully she hid her body uh, partially or half of the body was hidden behind the door now but I knew now that I was right and uh, this is when or uh, this is when the author realized that she it was not wrong she had come to the right address she was now confirmed she was now sure that it was the right address well are you knew my mother I asked have you come back said the woman now as the author was sure and certain that uh, it was the right address and uh, she talked or she was talking to the same lady uh, then she asked her uh, you knew my mother she asked straightforwardly that you knew my mother uh, you met my mother uh, you had uh, you had good idea or you have good idea of my mother have you come back and she replied with the question have you come back if you return she wanted to know I thought that no one had come back only me okay and then she said uh, that I thought no one had come back uh, uh, she said that I thought no one nobody had returned from there now she says only me author replies only me that is only I have returned a door opened and closed in the passage behind her. A musty smell emerged. Okay, so as the author reached there to the address, to that particular address, uh, there came out a woman and uh, she was having a little chat with her and, and then the author initially failed to recognized her but later as she discovered her wearing the cardigan the same cardigan that was once used by her mother she was now sure and certain that uh, she had been to the right address and this is when 
uh, this woman tried to hide herself behind the door and she uh, took uh, almost half of her body behind the door so this was the opportunity to get a view of inside inside the house and as uh, as now there was an opening for the things to be viewed inside so uh, what she could see inside was a door was opening and closing behind her behind that woman and also there emerged a musty smell a kind of smell that comes uh, from a house which is not having uh, proper ventilation proper uh, source of lighting that is proper source of sunlight coming to the house reaching the uh, rooms so such musty that is damn kind of smell was coming from the house that is the walls were damp I regret I cannot do anything for you now she replied the woman replied uh, that she was very sorry that she could not do anything for her that she was helpless she has uh, uh, nothing uh, to offer her as help I have come here especially on the train I wanted to talk to you for a moment and now uh, the author persisted she was not willing to go without having a chat without having a talk to uh, the woman and uh, she tried to convince her uh, by saying that she came here spatially on the train with the spatial and the sole purpose of meeting her she came there by train it's not convenient for me now said the woman I can't see you another time now uh, she said when she found that she was uh, not going she was uh, adamant she was uh, uh, wanting to have urgently a serious talk a talk say a chat with her so she said this is a not convenient time for me that is uh, that is I am right now busy yes I've got some work to attend I have some uh, uh, business to attend so or uh, come some other time she nodded and cautiously closed the door as though no one inside the house should be disturbed now saying this she closed the door very cautiously very carefully uh, she took great care to close the door and the way she she did it it suggested that she did not want the other people inside the house to get disturbed that the others should not know come to know that someone had come to her to talk about her uh, her family possession her family belongings I stood where I was on the step the curtain in front of the bay window moved someone stared at me and would then have asked what I wanted now she was there she stood there only she was uh, undecided she could not decide as what to do because she had come there with only one purpose with the sole purpose of meeting her and that she denied meeting she denied giving her time so uh, she had no other business no other work there uh, then to return back and then she was having plenty of time before uh, the train arrived the scheduled train arrived there was plenty of time in her hand so she was undecided as what to do so she remained there she remained there standing say she stood there for a while on the steps there only and then she noticed something that is the curtain in front of the bay window 
that is there was a bay window bay window is uh, a different kind of window uh, not the kind of window that we uh, we normally see in our houses but a projected window a window which uh, is extended which which uh, is say uh, constructed in such a way that it remains extended extended out of the wall that is uh, that is the walls are there the wall of the house so it will have an extension the window will have an extension uh, that is extension from the wall it will be extended uh, from the wall so that is called bay window so the bay window was there and the a curtain was also there so she noticed that uh, someone was moving the curtain someone and then she noticed that someone stared at her and uh, she w would have she would have asked she would have asked what she wanted that is what the author wanted uh, maybe that she asked it to the same woman the woman of the house that is mrs darling she asked this question to darling uh, as what she wanted oh nothing the woman would have said and then the woman might have said if that was asked uh, if that was asked to uh, darling then she would have said that well nothing uh, the woman would have said it's nothing she would simply say she would just uh, uh, say it's nothing that is uh, no serious work no serious business uh, that uh, casually the lady had come to come uh, to ask for something and this way she would dismiss the whole issue she would dismiss uh, the whole thing I looked at the nameplate again darling it said now she looked at the nameplate she was still standing there now she nicely noticed that all the things took a good look at all the things so she first uh, looked at the nameplate and uh, the nameplate said darling that is the name written there was darling in black letters on white animal that is uh, written on white plate with black ink with black letters and on the jam and it was fixed on to the jam jam is the uh, structure of the door so it was fixed to that as we generally find a bit higher the number and a little higher than that was written the number and the number written there was 46 okay so uh, there was the nameplate and above that nameplate a little higher than the nameplate was the number of the house and that uh, number was 46 the number said 46 the number read 46 as I walked slowly back to the station I thought about my mother who had given me the dress years ago and now she was slowly walking back to the station since she was having no other work and uh, the train was still uh, hours later to come so she was walking very casually very slowly and as she was moving back to the station the thought of her mother came to her mind who had given the address years ago that is the thought of the mother uh, she dreamt of mother and uh, dreamt of that even when uh, mother told her about that particular address and that was years ago several years ago it had been in the first half of the war I was home for a few days and it struck me immediately that something or other about the room had changed now it was the first half of the war that is uh, the, there was uh, there was a kind of war there in Finland or Holland what is here 
other country mentioned is uh, Holland yes and uh, there was the civil war going on there so during the first half of the civil war uh, she reached there she uh, she came to home she went home say and there she noticed that something about the room had changed that a uh, few things are few things have gone missing and she noticed it very immediately I missed various things and she missed various things a lot of things were found missing from the room from not only her room but from other rooms as well my mother was surprised I should have noticed so quickly and mother was very much surprised she was uh, so puzzled that she noticed it so quickly that she entered hardly took a rest of say five or ten minutes and she realized immediately instantly that uh, things about the rooms have changed a lot of things have gone missing so then she told me about mrs dorling and after that when she noticed things uh, mother then was forced to tell her about mrs dorling before that she was not ready she was not willing to tell her anything about the things uh, that had gone missing from the rooms from the house i had never heard of her but apparently she was an old acquaintance of my mother uh, but then this name as mother told her about was never heard before this name never appeared in any of the discussions uh, previously but it was clear it was evident from a uh, mother's uh, say uh, discussion mother's talks that she was an old acquaintance acquaintance that she was uh, an old say either friend or some kind of relatives known person you can say she was known to her and not only known but all acquaintance that is uh, she had known her uh, for a long time whom she hadn't seen for years whom uh, she hadn't seen for years that is uh, she was an old acquaintance that is darling uh, was an old acquaintance uh, to her mother a uh, bad then uh, she suddenly disappeared from the scene and due to which uh, there was no discussion of her uh, there was no uh, say uh, her name uh, never surfaced in any of the discussions she had suddenly turned up and renewed their contact since then she had come regularly and suddenly uh, she appeared there and then renewed the contact uh, since she reappeared there maybe that or she had gone to some other place she got uh, shifted to some other place and uh, stayed there for a few years and after that she returned she came back to her home and when she returned there to her hometown she renewed her contact with author's mother and now she started to come quite regularly every time she leaves here she takes something home with her said my mother and then mother said since uh, uh, pro most probably she returned during the war time and uh, when she came uh, she reestablished her connection her contact with author's mother and now every time every time that she left the house author's house she carried away something uh, from there she took all the table silver in one go and then the antique plates that hung there okay so uh, the first time that is at first she took away all the silver all the silvers that is 
all the silver uh, crockery spoons plates and uh, things uh, that were uh, that were of silver so she removed all the silver items of crocker uh, crockery at first then uh, she removed she took away all the antique antique plates that hung there then uh, in the next part she removed all the antique plates the decorative plates that hung from the wall she had trouble lagging those large vases and I'm worried she got a creak in her back uh, from the crockery and then she took away all the vases large vases were there for decorative purposes and uh, she removed those uh, she took away those large vases and then while she was taking away the crockery that is the uh, the utensils of kitchen kitchen utensils uh, she got a creak she got a, a crack some kind of cramp or crack uh, to her back and she had trouble while while taking away the crockery items she had trouble she got a creak she got a crack or say a cramp some kind of cramp to her back my mother shook her head pityingly and she shook her head that she was uh, uh, she had sympathy for her uh, she felt uh, quite hurt quite bad as she got creak uh, she got uh, hurt while carrying the crockery items because she thought that she was doing uh, a good job uh, for the family for author's family she was saving uh, the uh, family belongings or the uh, say possessions family uh, possessions of the of the author and she took pity she felt bad when she got a creep okay then I would never have dared ask her she suggested it to me herself she even insisted okay so and she could never dare ask her that is she could never tell her not to carry the things away because uh, because it was suggested by her only that is darling uh, mrs darling only suggested that she should uh, carry away she should take away all the family belongings because there uh, she uh, the logic she presented here was that uh, they would remain safer at her place than here so she could not deny she could not say no to her if we have to leave here we shall lose everything she says uh, that is she said that if uh, they had to leave this town if they had to leave this place uh, then they would lose everything that is the author's family would lose everything all the crockery all the good items all the silvers and everything would be lost all the family possessions the family belongings would be lost uh, because there was a civil war and uh, civil war means looting and all kind of things uh, could take place so in that case uh, they would lose everything and she assured her that these things would be safer at her place have you agreed with her that she should keep everything I asked she should keep everything I asked so uh, she said uh, did you agree with her when she said she uh, should take away all the things and that everything would be safer with her as if that's necessary my mother cried my mother said the author's mother said that that was necessary uh, I felt that was necessary it would simply be an insult to talk like that and to talk like that to raise a doubt suspicion about her intention would be wrong here and think about the risk she was she's she was running and think about the risk that she was having while carrying all the things each 
time she goes out of our door with a full of suitcase or bag and each time she uh, went out of our doors with suitcase either suitcase or a bag the kind of risk she was carrying that was uh, that was unimaginable that was extraordinary my mother seemed to notice that I was not entirely convinced I guess her mother now discovered she found that uh, from the facial expression of the author that she was not convinced she was not satisfied with the kind of uh, logic the kind of answers she provided her she looked at me reprovingly and after that we spoke no more about it and after that she looked at the author uh, reprovingly in a manner that she was scolding her or she was uh, unhappy with her with the author uh, since she was raising questions about the intention of that lady so uh, she was unhappy about it and then after that uh, they spoke no more about uh, that particular thing meanwhile I had arrived at the station without having paid much attention to the things on the way now she was just thinking she went to the past and was just recollecting those memories uh, so now she reached she reached station without having that is uh, while she was walking towards the station she did not pay much attention to uh, the things on the way uh, the things on the way means uh, the things on both sides of the uh, road uh, because uh, those were the familiar things so Cherise without having much paying attention to the things on the way I was walking in familiar places again for the first time since the war since everything there was familiar to her she had uh, lived there in the past so uh, the old memories related to that was still a fr was still fresh in her mind uh, and and uh, she was just walking the familiar uh, road the familiar uh, place once again after the war got over but I did not want to go further uh, than was necessary. Those were the familiar sights, and she didn't want to uh, pay much attention to those things because that would revive unpleasant memories of her past. I didn't want to upset myself with the sight of streets and houses full of memories from a Present time, so that is say said the same thing. That is, uh, she did not want to upset her, uh, make her unhappy with the uh, sights, or with the uh, memories of the from the past, and thus becoming upset. So she did not pay much attention. She did not look at the things on both sides of the road. She just went straight up to the station uh, and bother not to look at the things about in the train back I saw mrs. Dorling in front of me again as I had the first time I met her so here uh, in the train when she was traveling she got onto the train and there she found Mrs. Darling in the same compartment and she found her the same way uh, as she f met her the first time in her in her life the way she met her during the first meeting with her the same way she appeared in the uh, in the uh, in the train uh, on the same compartment Okay, then it was the morning after the day my mother had told me about her and this first meeting was the day after 
after it was the say the morning it was actually she came uh, there at morning so uh, it was the morning after the day mother had said about mrs darling and that is she reached home uh, during the first half of the war she reached home uh, and then mother since she got aware of the concerts of the things missing in the room uh, in different rooms other rooms also in the house in the house in particular uh, so uh, when she asked mother mother informed about mrs darling so that was the first time mother spoke about that lady and the next day only the lady appeared there mrs darling came to their house so that was the first meeting now now let's see uh, so that day she had appeared there i had got up late and coming downstairs i saw my mother about to see someone out okay so that day the next morning she got up late and she was uh, then uh, coming downstairs when she saw her mother seeing someone out of the door a woman with a broad bag that lady that mother was with was having a broad bag because uh, their back was towards the author uh, so she could see the back and it was a broad bag what she noticed was a broad bag oh uh, there is my daughter said my mother uh, she beckoned to me uh, the women nodded and picked up the suitcase under uh, the coat track okay so as uh, she came up there and she might have said good morning to her and then uh, mother introduced her to uh, the daughter and as she looked at her uh, as she looked at uh, the daughter that is the author she beckoned that is she just noted um, noted that is suggesting that uh, saying okay and that way she just noted she uh, gave a shake to her head she moved her head in that way uh, uh, affirmatively and then she picked up the suitcase that was placed under the coat rack she wore a brown coat and a shapeless hat she wore a brown coat and a shapeless hat that was her appearance eh? does she live far away i asked seeing the difficulty she had going out of the house with a heavy case okay so the author asked uh, mother her mother if she lived far away from there from the house uh, because uh, she was having difficulty carrying those things carrying that heavy case the suitcase was quite heavy and she was having trouble carrying that so uh, she instinctively asked if she lived far away from there in Marconi Street said my mother uh, number 46 remember that and mother answered she lived in Marconi Street and house number 46 and she also uh, asked her to remember this address I had remembered it that is the author committed it stuck it to her mind and that's why uh, it was well preserved but I had waited a long time to go there but she took really a lot of time she took a lot of time to decide before she could finally go there and uh, finally she decided to get back her family belongings initially after the liberation I was absolutely not interested in all those all that stored stuff and naturally I was also rather afraid of it uh, in the initial period uh, say initial days of the liberation when the country got liberated uh, then she was not interested in all those stored stuff those things all those things which were uh, stuffed 
either in boxes or suitcases or kept inside, uh, kept somewhere in the store, uh, this and that. So she was not interested in all those stored things. And uh, the next point is that she was also afraid of it. Afraid? Why? Because she apprehended, she thought that uh, if she brought back those things, those would provoke her old memories, the memories of her family, the memories of uh, the past life. And so she was afraid of, uh, afraid of uh, the things. Afraid of being confronted with things that had belonged to a connection that uh, no longer existed. As I've said already, uh, she was scared, she was afraid uh, that if she brought back those things, that those would uh, revive her old memories, memories of the past, memories of her mother. And uh, since the mother was gone, mother was dead. Uh, so uh, she did not want that the memories of her mother uh, should now return and disturb her, uh, make her mentally upset. Okay, that longer, which were hidden away in the cupboards and boxes and waiting in vain until they were put back in their place again, which had endured all those years because they were things. Okay, so now she says that uh, those were, since uh, she previously mentioned that she was not interested in those stored stuffs because uh, they were hidden away. In the cupboards, they were put in the cupboards, in boxes, and also, say, they were waiting. They were waiting in vain, unsuccessfully, uselessly waiting until they were put back in their place again. Because she had lost, most probably, she had lost her uh, everything. Her house, her uh, mother was uh, dead, house was also lost, maybe lost to the war, the, that war. So uh, it was uh, impossible to uh, put them back to their uh, places, their, uh, their, say, fixed places, to their particular places. Uh, that was impossible and, uh, and uh, that's why she was also not interested because of this also she was not much interested in getting them back uh, which had endured all those years because they were uh, things and they endured uh, such a long time such long period uh, staying under say staying under some confined area that is staying inside boxes cupboards uh, or some other places and they still maintain their same feature, their same uh, their existence uh, remained uh, the same way, not affected because they were things. They were simply things and not human beings because uh, chaining human beings or keeping human beings in that way inside the boxes for a long time uh, would not remain the same way. Human beings would not remain the same way, but they uh, maintain their uh, features the same way because there were things. But gradually everything became more normal again, but things started getting normal again. Her fear started to go away, started to uh, fade away uh, or say fade out so uh, things w were getting normal getting back to normalcy bread was getting to be a lighter color uh, there was a bed you could sleep in unthreatened a room with a view you were more used to glancing at each day so uh, all these things are mentioned here as bread was getting uh, to be lighter color that is uh, things were returning back to normalcy earlier 
things were quite harsh, quite bad, and they could not lead people. The author and the family and all could not lead a normal life, but things were returning to normalcy, and that's why it is mentioned that bread was getting to be lighter color. Now it was losing that harshness, uh, that uh, that particular, you can say, pitch of the color, and it was uh, getting thinner and thinner, and uh, so things were getting normal. There was a bed, uh, you could sleep in unthreatened, and also uh, you could sleep in bed unthreatened. Uh, previously, there was always a risk, a risk of uh, losing life. Uh, you were uh, believe you believe that you were taking rest, a uh, peacefully taking rest, but then uh, say something happens, something like a bombing t took place and uh, you lost your life. So he, now, since the situation had changed, uh, there was peace. Uh, so you could sleep unthreatened, without any threat. You could sleep peacefully in your bed, and you could also open the windows, doors, and see the uh, views outside, which your eyes were familiar with earlier. You can open the doors and windows even. And one day, I noticed I was curious about all the possessions. Uh, that must still be at that address. I wanted to see uh, them touch, remember. And one day the author found that she was curiously interested. She was uh, curious about, she was uh, strangely interested about the family possessions, the family belongings uh, that she thought must be there at the address. She wanted now to touch and feel those things and remember the past. After my first visit in vain to Mrs. Dorling's house, I decided to try a second time. Now, coming back to the present situation. So, first visit went in vain, was unsuccessful, bore no fruit. Now she decided to try it second time. Now a girl of about 15 opened the door to me. I asked if her mother was at home and uh, she went there to that address the second time and this time the door was opened by a girl of about 15 years and author asked her if the mother was at home. No. She said, my mother's doing an errand. No matter, I said, I'll wait for her. She replied that mother was out to do some work, do some e errand is a thing that you do for some other uh, person that you, uh, the job or the thing. I followed the girl along the passage. That is now the author decided that she would return only after meeting her, only after having a chat with her. So decide, she decided to stay back, wait for her. And as she decided to wait there, so the girl welcomed her inside. And she was walking along the passage now. She was following the girl from the behind and they were, uh, she was leading her through a passage, through a gallery, say. An old-fashioned iron hanuka candle holder hung next to a mirror, and what she observed there, as they were walking down the passage, she found an iron hanuka, old-fashioned, old iron hanuka hung next to a mirror. Mirror was there, and next to the mirror hung old-fashioned iron Hanukkah candle holder that was the candle holder we never used it because it was much more cumbersome than uh, a single candlestick and they never used looking at that she instantly realized that 
or the thing belonged to them it was their own possession and uh, she remembered instantly that they never used that iron hanukkah because of its its cumbersome size or weight because it was too heavy or it uh, took a lot of space and that's why they never used it instead they use uh, other candlestick or other uh, candle holders simple and uh, simple and uh, lighter won't you sit down asked the girl now the girl asked her to come inside and sit down that is uh, let's see asked the girl she held open the door of the living room and I went inside past her that is as they reached near the living room or the girl opened the door held it uh, with her hand and asked her to come inside and sit down now the author went past her I stopped horrified the author entered and she was she was shocked she was astonished she was puzzled I was in a room I knew and did not know she got awestruck and she realized that she was in a room she knew and did not know that looking at the things inside the room she realized that she was in a familiar place and then she realized that no she was in some other room she was in uh, mrs dorling's house in her uh, in her house or in her room so she instantly realized no it cannot be and uh, maybe the way things were arranged because everything was given its a uh, proper everything was properly arranged in their house and here things were not arranged in a proper order in a proper way so she instantly realized that no it cannot be uh, their house or it cannot be uh, her place I found myself in the midst of things I did want to see again but which oppressed me in the strange atmosphere uh, okay so here she says that she wanted she wanted so much to be with her old belongings and now she was there in the midst in the middle of her old belongings that uh, the way they were arranged she uh, she found uh, suffocated there okay so after that or because of the tasteless way everything was arranged because of the ugly furniture or the muggy smell that hung there I don't know but I scarcely dare to look around me so oh, she was uh, feeling suffocated the reason given here that maybe uh, it was uh, since all the things were were arranged in a tasteless manner not arranged in a proper way or because of the furniture because of uh, the uh, you know worn out furnitures because of the muggy smell that foul smell that uh, you know that uh, uh, damn kind of smell that hung around there uh, she felt suffocated and then she says I don't know bad or why she felt in that way but uh, she scarcely dared to look around she hardly hardly had the courage to look at the things around she felt so bad so suffocated there looking at the things I don't know okay so after that the girl moved a chair I sat down and stared at the woolen tablecloth now the girl offered her a chair she sat down she sat down and then she stared she looked at the woolen tablecloth 
I rubbed it. My fingers grew warm from rubbing. She looked at the tablecloth and she realized that even that tablecloth was theirs. So she touched it now. She touched and she rubbed it. Rubbed it and her finger grew warm from rubbing. That is, she uh, she felt so friendly. She felt so uh, so much of uh, a nearness, so much of attachment. You feel warm when uh, you feel yourself uh, in a friendly situation. Uh, you feel some kind of attachment from the other side. So she also felt in that way. Because that belonged to her and she was touching it after a long, after a long time. I followed the lines of the pattern. Somewhere on the edge there should be a burn mark that had never been repaired. Now she was following a pattern. The pattern uh, on the on the tablecloth and she realized that somewhere there must be a burn mark in that tablecloth which had never been repaired which they uh, could not repair my mother will be back soon said the girl i've already made tea for her will you have a cup uh, so after that, after offering her the seat, the chair, she uh, prepared milk. Uh, she prepared tea for her. Uh, she went uh, maybe that she went into the kitchen and then she prepared tea, uh, and she uh, she brought it for her. She asked uh, for the tea, and at the same time informed her that she had also prepared tea for mother because mother was about to. Come. Thank you. She said thank you because she was lost in all those things. Uh, and so she said thank you. That is, she said yes, please. Uh, you can, uh, yes, you can prepare it. Uh, and that uh, she was ready to have it. She would take it. I looked up. The girl put cups ready on the tea table. She had a broad bag. Now she looked up. She found the girl put cups ready on the tea table. She was placing the uh, cups on the tea table uh, and she followed here. She was following her and she found the same appearance as uh, the mother was having that is she had a broad bag too. Just like her mother. She poured tea from a white pot. Now she poured tea from a white pot. All it had was gold border on the lid. She was pouring uh, tea from a white pot and she realized that uh, the lid of it was having a gold border. That is border of golden color. I remembered. She opened a box and took some spoons out. She remembered about that, about the teapot, and now the girl opened the box and from the box she took out some spoons. Well, that's a nice box. I heard my own voice. Now she looked at the box and she said it to herself, that's a nice box. It was a strange voice and it was a strange voice because uh, the box was now with the girl and that should have been at their house uh, at author's place but uh, it was with her so it was a strange voice maybe that previously she never appreciated the box uh, because she was used to looking at it but now since it was at a different place so she was now appreciating it as though each sound was different in this room uh, and each sound in the room seemed different to her oh you know about them she had 
turned round and brought me my tea," she laughed. So here, as she was preparing her tea, she spoke about those things, uh, the, all those things that is the spoon and uh, the teapot and all, and she said, do you know about them? Uh, she, she said this, then uh, she presented uh, tea. She offered tea to the author and laughed then. And then she gave a laugh. My mother says, it's antique. We've got lots more. My mother, she says, informed her that uh, her mother uh, said that uh, these are antique. These are old items and very valuable items and that we have got lots more and that they had got lots more of these types of these kinds. Uh, she pointed round the room, see for yourself and then she pointed round the room and uh, showed her that uh, they had got lots of those antique things here in the room. I had no need to follow her hand I knew which things she meant. And then the author uh, just thought to herself. She just uh, spoke to herself and she said that, no, I need not follow her uh, hand or her fingers uh, because she had every idea about what things she meant and what she wanted to say about. I just looked at the still life over the tea table. She just looked at the life over the tea table. And that is uh, a still life. Animated life. Sorry, inanimated life. So she looked at the tea table and uh, she was just thinking of it. That is thinking of the tea table, how the tea table was arranged in their house, how uh, the tea table looked. So she was imagining it looking at the tea table. As a child, I had always fancied uh, the apple on the pewter plate. And uh, uh, she realized uh, that as a child, she always fancied, she always thought uh, that she always imagined apples on the pewter plates she thought that the apple should be there on the pewter plates uh, we use it for everything she said and then uh, the plate was there um, most probably she was offered tea on the uh, on the pewter plate that is uh, we use plates so here she used the pewter plate to offer her the tea and here she says she mentions here that we use it for everything the girl said that we used we use it for everything that is they used that plate for everything for every purpose from as a plate to uh, to or the plate on which or they have their food. Everything, she said. Once we even ate of the plates hanging there on the wall, and she said that once even it so happened that uh, they had they had their meals of the of the uh, say the plates hanging there that is the, those decorative antique plates hanging on the wall I wanted it I wanted to so much but it wasn't anything special even the author says that even she wanted to have uh, food off uh, the plates but it wasn't anything special and it wasn't anything special for her uh, that is she knew about those plates and she knew about everything in the house I had found the burn mark on the tablecloth finally she got the burn marks that she was looking for uh, and she got it finally the girl looked questioningly at me 
as she got to the end of the burnt part of the table cloth, and she looked at it with interest, the girl, that is, uh, the girl there, uh, Darling's daughter, also looked at her with questioning eyes. She had uh, questions in her mind as why is she so much careful about the burn mark? Yes, I said, you got so used to touching all these lovely things in the house. Or you hardly look at them anymore. So, finally she said that, yes, uh, you got so used to touching all these lovely things in the house that you touch these lovely things so frequently that you are so used to it and hardly you pay any attention to any one of them. Okay, but since it's new, so I'm looking at this burn mark, and that's why it it, it had a uh, grip mark. You only notice when something is missing because it has to be repaired, or because you have lent it. For example, so here the author remarks, makes this remark sarcastically, mockingly to speak of the things once part of their family once the proud of the family so she says uh, you only become aware of the things when the thing is missing so missing maybe for two uh, two reasons one when it's either it has either gone for repairing or in other case or you have lent it to someone else so in these cases the thing might go missing from its place uh, so she says in this way again I heard the unnatural sound of my voice and I went on uh, again the voice was unnatural the voice sounded unnatural to her because here yeah, she was not able to open up she had something going in her mind but she cannot open it up so are uh, the voices unnatural sounding unnatural to her but she continues to hear a lot more of such unnatural sounds here so she continues to hear so what said here next I remember my mother once asked me if I would help her polish the silver. Then uh, the girl carries on. She keeps on saying that once uh, she remembers that her mother asked her uh, to help her polish the silver. It was a very long time ago and I was probably bored that day or perhaps I had to stay at home because I was ill as she had never asked me before so she asked her that day only on that day and it was very long time ago and probably she was there at home uh, and she was either bored that day on holidays she was bored or in the other case she was ill and that's why she stayed at home and since she had nothing to do so mother asked her if she could help her polish the silver because oh, that was the only occasion when mother asked her to polish them otherwise she never asked her I asked her which silver she meant and she replied surprised that it was the spoons forks and knives of course okay so then she wanted to know which silver she meant and her reply surprised her she was surprised she was astonished that it was the spoon silver spoon forks and the knives that she used every day to eat off and that was the strange thing 
I didn't know the cutlery we ate of every day was silver and that was very strange thing uh, because uh, she used it every day and yet she was not having any idea uh, that what she was eating off was silver <coughs> the girl laughed again again the girl uh, gave laughter gave a, a peal of laughter I bet you don't know it is either I looked intently at her and she said I bet I challenge you that even uh, you have no idea of it you cannot have any idea of it even and the author looked intently at her the author looked at her very closely what we eat with she says uh, I bet you don't have uh, you don't know it either what we eat with well do you know then she continued and she finished that question and said well do you know do you have any idea about it she hesitated she walked to the sideboard and wanted to open a drawer I'll look it's in here then first she hesitated a little well because uh, she was not sure whether she should uh, show it to her or not or in the other case if she had shown her and mother uh, mother uh, was uh, say uh, mother didn't like it so in that case that would be that won't be good so she hesitated a while and then she walked to the sideboards then she walked to the sideboard that is a small drawer uh, so she went there and wanted to open a drawer and then she wanted to open a drawer uh, saying that I uh, look uh, it it is in here it should be here I jumped up I was forgetting the time I must catch my train she jumped up instantly she looked at the watch and jumped up instantly and said I must go I must catch the train I must catch my train because it was time and she had to return and buy the train that particular train she had her hand on the drawer now she had the hand on the drawer I don't you want to wait for my mother she asked if she would not wait for her mother okay no I must go I walk to the door she said no I must go I cannot wait for your mother and saying this you walked to the door the girl pulled the drawer open I can find my way my own way and then she opened the drawer uh, the girl pulled the drawer and opened drawer open and uh, she wanted to show it to her show them to her but then uh, she said uh, that she had to go and then she said that she's going to say that uh, she would find her way out to the door she did not come she did not come uh, out to the door as I walked down the passage I heard the jingling of spoons and forks and as she walked down the passage uh, she heard the jingling the clanking or clattering of the forks and spoons at the corner of the road I looked up at the nameplate she looked at the nameplate at the corner of the road and it read Marconi Street I had been at number 46 the address was correct and then she uh, just uh, she just thought of the house the house number the house number was 46 uh, so she was correct the uh, street was correct the house number was correct so the address was also correct and she knew it still she confirmed uh, once again but now I didn't want to remember it anymore and she said it to herself that 
she didn't want to remember this address any more that uh, she must forget this address I wouldn't go back there because the objects that are linked in your memory with the familiar life of former times instantly lose their value when severed from them okay so she said that she would not go back to that place uh, because a logic is uh, when the objects that you or uh, you remain connected with or uh, that was part of your uh, memory past memory uh, those things suddenly lose their significance their uh, their value when severed from them when or they are shivered from or the memories if uh, the things are shivered things are disconnected uh, from the memories of the past uh, that is you stop thinking of the uh, of the things and the memories also uh, from the memory also you cut off those things then in that case uh, you lose uh, the value the things lose their value their significance the importance or you see them again in strange surroundings uh, and again you see them in strange surrounding that is if you go back again you see them in strange surrounding and she didn't like to see things again in strange surrounding in a strange setup and again if in the other case she had brought them back uh, to her to her place again all the things would be placed in a strange setup in a strange surrounding because here now she had a rented room and there the space was not sufficient and what should I have done with them in a small rented room where the shreds of blackout paper still hung along the windows and no more than a handful of cutlery fitted in the narrow table drawer again she thinks what should she do with those things in a small rented room uh, because here all uh, these things would again be placed in awkward ways and again that would give her pain again here in this rented room a uh, space is not sufficient moreover she is not able to take care of all the things uh, because uh, one of the things she points out here is uh, once she used uh, some paper a color paper for say uh, for decoration purposes and uh, it was used there on the windows maybe on the window sills and other places so there are uh, the shreds the parts of the paper pieces of the paper still hung and they have uh, taken black color that is she was not able to take care of all the things uh, that carefully that meticulously and so th those would be useful she would be not able to take care of those things and again uh, the cutlery that she was having uh, in her small uh, narrow table drawer uh, there she had only a small a little handful of cutlery and if you if she brought them back again they would be there only in the cupboards I resolved to forget the address of all the things I had to forget and that would be the easiest uh, so I resolved to forget the address so you decided to forget the address and what she says here of all the things I had to forget uh, that would be the easiest and she says that all the things that she should now forget she should uh, severed her uh, connection with in of all of them this would be the easiest one that is forgetting uh, these belongings from her past would be the easiest thing so this is all and with this we have come to the end of this chapter so thank you for now